Welcome back Commander, my name's Tim and in this video we take a look at my top 5 loyalty missions in Mass Effect 2. If this is your first time here, I make videos on Mass Effect, so if you're a fan of the series, come join our crew today by hitting that subscribe button. In Mass Effect 2, you have to build your squad for a suicide mission, in what I think is the best game in the franchise. In order to keep them alive, you need to make sure they don't have any personal issues, so they're not distracted when their attention is needed the most. In order to do that, each of them have a loyalty mission. Complete that, and not only are they super focused on the mission, but you also get some cool new threads to kit them out in. I've selected my top 5, let me know your comments which is your favourite. Creating this list isn't easy, as all the loyalty missions are unique, but Kasumi's stands out in particular because of its design. Essentially it's split into two parts, with the first part being a sort of James Bond spy caper, with the second half a typical run and gun. Kasumi is a master thief and she needs your help to steal a grey box, a sort of implant that records and stores memories. This particular one belonged to her partner and former lover who was killed by Donovan Hawk. Hawk is the master villain of this side story, but he doesn't come across as your typical moustache twirling evil for the sake of being evil character. John Ulap makes an impressive job with the voice acting, giving him a thick southern African accent and really brings out the character to life. I don't believe we've met Donovan Hawk. Solomon Gunn. A pleasure. There's a nice nod to a previous game in a giant statue of Seren that comes as a Trojan horse for your weapons and armour, as well as a nod to another Bioware game in the form of a Noga from Dragon Age Origins. The premise is that you've got yourself invited to a party and assumed a fake identity. You need to get into Donovan Hawk's safe, and to do that you need to strip away layers of security. A DNA scan, a voice recognition and a security barrier. As you mingle in the party you need to find a way into Hawk's bedroom for a DNA sample or get him talking for a voice recognition. It's brilliantly crafted to make you feel like a true spy. Once you get rumbled, then you have to fight your way out, which pulls you back into what Mass Effect's all about. Stolen Memory was a DLC add-on, so this section serves to show you Kasumi's fighting ability as you move through the warehouse taking out waves of enemies and resulting in a boss battle against a Mantis gunship. As a Spectre, it would be your job to blend in with the surroundings, doing the reconnaissance part of the job. And although you may have told the council to stick the Spectre job up their proverbial, I still enjoy being able to see this side of Shepard, and it helps show not only it's all about guns and biotics, well, that is, until the shooting part. Legion is a Geth, and having him, it, join your crew is a great way to see the Geth side of their war with the Quarians. There's always two sides to every story, and placing you in the middle to decide who is right and who is wrong is one of Mass Effect's best qualities. In Legion's loyalty mission, you get to revisit the awe and mystery of the Geth that you felt during the effects of Mass Effect 1. At that time, you knew very little about them, only they were machines created to serve as labourers and tools of war, and that they rose up against their masters and became self-aware. As far as you were concerned, they had joined forces with Saren, and therefore had become targets for your well-placed rifle shots. However, as we learn from Legion, not all Geth joined Saren. Those which did became known as the Heretics. Legion learns that the heretics working on a modified Reaper virus and they intend to upload the rest to the Geth and have all Geth join them. So the plan is to blow up the space station that the code is being developed in. Seems simple enough, that is, until you arrive on the station. The moment you enter, Legion informs you the Reaper code is complete and they could upload it at any time. However, instead of just blowing up the station, Legion suggests rewriting the code to use against the heretics and bring them back into the fold. What I really like this mission is that you go through the space station and you get little snippets of the Geth, how they work or operate. I guess you could call it their culture, although more accurately it's probably their processes. How the heretics are now suspicious of the Geth and which shouldn't happen, and this in turn has Legion questioning why. What have the Geth done? Why have they been treated this way? It gives you a whole new perspective on the Geth and it makes your choice at the end a little bit harder. Do you now rewrite the heretics and make the guest stronger, or destroy him, knowing now what you didn't know before? Each option will have lasting consequences for the Geth and the Quarians. Garrus' loyalty mission seems very clear cut on the surface. The mission itself is nothing too spectacular. You get a nice little throwback to Mass Effect 1 in the form of a womanizer and disgraced CSEC officer Harkin, and the premise is quite straightforward. It's a revenge mission. After Shepard's death, Garrus formed a mercenary team and decided to take out all the gangs on Omega. One of the team betrays the rest, having them all killed off and leaving Garrus alone to be taken out by the remaining gangs. In fact, it's the tail end of this setup you see when you recruit Garrus. The traitor's name is Sidonus, and you can play this mission on face value. Sidonus betrayed Garrus' team, and you can help Garrus kill his former team member. Boom. Job done. And speaking of booms, don't forget to give the like button a boom. Now, you won't get much out of the mission if you don't stop to actually think about Sidonus. Remember there are two sides to every story. 
put yourself in Garrus' shoes and you've been betrayed. Your team's wiped out and you've been left for dead. But put yourself in Sidonis' shoes and what would you have done? You've been captured by the very gang you're trying to kill. If they let you go, would you give up your team's position and hope they can take care of themselves or would you die for these bunch of mercenaries? Now you as Shepard have this option to warn Sidonis or let Garrus take his shot. When you know more about The Rock and the hard place Sidonis was in, is it as easy to have him killed? Jack is very interesting. When you break her out of prison, she comes across that she's going to be this one-dimensional character, a crazy biotic psychopath that's just going to be angry at everything. She reinforces this when you talk to her on the ship, acting like a petulant child and just being angry at everything. It's not until you start her loyalty mission that you actually get to see the real Jack. It's where she starts to show cracks in her armor and it'll be the turning point in her character. Jack was a Cerberus test subject designed to be the next perfect human. However, a guard subjected her to a mental and physical torture in order to keep her emotions at peak. All of Jack's anger and hatred stems from being a Cerberus guinea pig. So in the words of Kylo, she needs to let the past die. Kill it if you need to. And to do that, she wants to plant a bomb at the heart of a Cerberus facility where she was raised. I'm a huge fan of urban exploring, basically going into disused buildings and looking at all the stuff left behind. You get a sense of mystery of what was used for and why they're left in such a way they are. Although I don't actually do it myself, I love watching YouTube videos about it. So when you touch down at the Cerberus space and it's a disused shell of its former self, you can imagine how giddy I felt. Wandering through this old building, listening to the recordings, you and Jack soon learn it wasn't her that had been treated the worst. In fact, she was Cerberus' prized possession and she was to be protected at all costs. This doesn't go down too well with Jack, and by the time you've made it to the heart of the facility, her room or cell if you prefer, everything Jack believed, her very foundations, have been broken down. The bomb she sets off is now more symbolic, and this character, who could have easily been just this one-dimensional, has now one of the best character arcs in the series. We don't know much about the Quarians up to this point. In Mass Effect, we only get to meet Tally, and she's this timid type who misses the sound of the engines. By the time Mass Effect 2 rolls around, Tally's already grown. The events of Mass Effect 1 have helped shape her into this strong, independent woman with a true sense of honor. This can be seen on Horizon when she's leading a team to save Vitor. Weapons down, Praza. Whatever's going on here, I don't think we need another fight. So when the call comes to inform her she's being placed on trial, this comes as quite a shock. Through our travels with Tally, we've learned about the Quarian and Geth War and how it left them nomads, a traveling fleet without a home. Their ships are their only lifeline to the world they once had. Tally is naturally distressed when she could be exiled. Her charge? Sending working parts of Geth back to the fleet. This loyalty mission is my number one spot as you get to learn so much about the Quarian people. You find out that they're planning on taking back their planet and they're split on the war with half supporting it and half against it. Tally's treason trial isn't really about her and it's more about her father who's an admiral. And it's heartbreaking when you try to save him to find out he's only really wanted to build her a house on the homeworld. There are a few different outcomes to the trial, with one even where Tally becomes an admiral herself. But best of all, take Legion with you for some really interesting dialogue. To see my top 10 moments in Mass Effect 1, click the links on screen now. Don't forget to give this video a boom on the like button, and a big thank you to all my supporters, including Nerdy Dude and Beverly. And I'll see you next time. Commander. <laughs>